pain and agony of losing 12 plus games to find yourself picking in the top of the draft means one of two things. You don't have a quarterback or you don't have players who can hit the quarterback. Teams who already have their QB are looking at the latter, and to spend a top five pick on a pass rusher means they have to be the foundation of your defensive line for the next decade. Texas Tech's Tyree Wilson and Alabama's Will Anderson Jr. are projected top five picks in nearly every mock draft, but there's a lot more on their film that reveals what kind of players teams will get, some of it good, some of it pretty bad. Before we dive into the both of them, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Upside. Everybody knows that inflation has been rising and everything is costing more and more money. Gas, groceries, restaurants have been killing me, which is why I'm glad I found Upside. Their easy-to-use app helps you get money back when you go out and spend, so you can counter inflation by getting the extra money you spend put right back in your wallet. It's crazy easy. I can just go to restaurants or wherever. Everything in California is insane right now with inflation. So I can just claim an offer on Upside, check in on the app, pay with my credit or debit card, and I've then gotten paid money. Upside users earn more than a million dollars every week, so if you want to save money and battle inflation, all you got to do is download the free Upside app and use promo code Rollins to get 25 cents or more back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. That's 25 cents or more back for every gallon on your first tank of gas using promo code Rollins. Let's kick it off with the good with Tyree Wilson, who is a 6'6", 275-pound fourth-year player. He is a behemoth of a man. His height and 35 and an eighth inch arms are both 95th percentile at his position, and he plays both inside and outside effectively. He has raw power that shines against both the pass and the run, and when he gets his hands on you while driving forward, there's nobody who can stay in front of him without getting bulldozed. As a pass rusher, he's pure power. I'd like to see him use his freakishly long arms more often to get inside guys' pads and drive them back, so that he can then set up counter moves off of that. But when he does do it, you can really see his muscle. He likes to attack outside with speed to widen the tackle and get him moving his feet, instead of letting him set up to take on his power. Then he can use those arms to get into his chest and drive his ass back quick. A key to his game is using consistent pad leverage, meaning he has to keep his shoulder pad level low to strengthen his base and create power from the ground up so he can explode into the tackle's pads, as opposed to standing straight up which saps some of your oomph. And with his 6'6 height, this'll always be a challenge. Here he shows good bend, and watch how with good pad leverage his legs push up and into the tackle and he puts them on his butt. When he uses the right pad leverage and pairs it with his strength, he's practically unblockable. Compacting all that power and transferring it from his lower body to upper body blows linemen away, and by using that leverage to stay low, he can drive up through guys and literally knock them off their feet. However, his pad leverage isn't consistent at all, and when he isn't staying low, he can't generate the power to drive through offensive linemen, and his rush gets completely nullified. While he needs to develop some consistency, he's powerful enough that he can still wreak havoc, even when some of these leverage issues and then also some technique issues pop up on his film. When he's outside, he doesn't have a very diverse arsenal of moves or a variety of plans to attack alignment. He's almost always going to try and use speed to power to widen that tackle like we saw, then use his long arm power move to drive him back and bull him into the quarterback. Here he takes too wide of an angle outside to set up that speed to power, but he gets Brandon Coleman to shoot his hands since the edge is being threatened. Coleman's hands even get into his pads, but instead of reacting to that arm that can now be chopped, wiped, ripped, something, he stays with the long arm, which he can get away with because of his arm length, at least in college, and then uses his hulkish strength to win the rep anyway. You can basically look at lack of technique two ways, where either you're excited that he can learn with NFL defensive line coaches who will coach him up and potentially unlock him, or you're worried that he is far away from possessing some of the basics and might never reach his potential. It's rare that he does show counter moves with his hands. It's sketchy that he doesn't for sure. I'm telling you, he is only power and never is able to throw that second pitch. But I did find a couple flashes of him trying, which is good. This time he uses his speed rush to get around Coleman instead of speed to power, and when Coleman shoots his hands to slow him down and get into his pads, Wilson tries to counter and use a cross-chop club where he swats the outside arm down with his opposite arm then turns around the edge. 
The key to this move, and all speed moves, is getting your inside leg through your body to reposition your hips towards the quarterback. Because Wilson doesn't have the technique down to effectively weaken Coleman's punch, his hips stay set upfield, and while he does somewhat salvage the rush with his bend, he doesn't affect the quarterback. To show an example of literally the one time I did see him counter correctly with good technique, it was on actually a non-pass rush. When Anthony Belton fires out of his break super quick, Wilson adjusts his rush and punishes him over setting. When he shimmies, then starts to come back inside, he's baited Belton's hands out, who now needs to protect inside. Wilson uses a stab to weaken his punch. Stab is like a finesse version of a long arm. Then he uses an arm over to leave him in the dust. Once again, the key to this move is getting this leg through his body to kind of wall off Belton and limit his surface to attack, and Wilson absolutely blows right by him. So, while he definitely has some tools to develop into a really devastating pass rusher, there's still a lot to be desired. Right now, he's better against the run, where he can rely more on that power and massive frame to compress rushing lanes, and then use his athleticism to finish for the tackle. He does a great job of boxing counter. You can either go inside of the pulling guard to try and spill the ball carrier outside, if that's where the defense has put their help, or Texas Tech boxes counter, which forces the help back inside. He uses his power to hold those guards in place to condense those lanes for the running back, and at the same time, when he sees its zone, he can just blow linemen back into the run to break up the play. These show his power, but what you get with Wilson is also the athleticism. When offenses leave him unblocked and read him, where either when he crashes down for the back, the QB keeps it, or if he stays for the QB, the QB gives it, Wilson uses a surf technique to patiently wait and read the play out, Seize the give, then watch this explosion, cause it's real. Now, to juxtapose him with Will Anderson Jr., they are as different from each other, at the same position, as anybody could possibly be. While both are technically edge rushers, Anderson is just 6'4", 243, his weight is in just the 23rd percentile at the position, but in just three years he finished second all-time in Alabama history with 34 and a half sacks and second with 50 and a half tackles for a loss. He projects as an outside-the-tackle defender. Think of like TJ Watt in a 3-4 who primarily rushes the passer but then can also drop back into coverage as well. As a rusher, he has good hand placement, good instincts, good technique, and is extremely smart. He is much smaller than Wilson, so he wins in many different ways, primarily using that good hand placement. He likes to use quick footwork to force the tackle off balance and get him to shoot his hands too early so he can counter him. The shimmy gets Cameron Jones to stop his feet, then shoots his right arm to stop him, so Anderson uses his hand to contact that arm and weaken the punch. Notice how he gets his inside leg through and sets himself on a path to demolish the quarterback. He is very good at using his upper body to influence the tackle during the rush to get him off balance so that he can take advantage. Instead of shimmying, he just uses a straight speed rush to threaten the edge. But look at this ever so slight lean towards the tackle. This looks like he's coming with the bull rush, but like we talked about with Wilson, Anderson uses a finesse stab instead of a long arm and then dips and rips around the edge. Those two plays look good and were good examples of his ceiling as a quick-footed, smart, technically sound pass rusher, but then you turn on the Tennessee film where he's facing off mono e mono against 6'6", 333-pound Darnell Wright, who will also go in the first round April 27th, and Will Anderson looks like Will Farrell. He could just not get past Wright to save his life. He used all his footwork tricks to try and get him off balance, but Wright knew the only way Anderson would beat him is with his hand counters and wasn't worried whatsoever about his power, so he just kept his hands down and let Anderson bull him as much as he pleased. The threat of the bull rush is arguably the most important tool a pass rusher can have in his back, and if you can't strike that fear into the tackle, all your ancillary moves aren't going to work. Even when he fooled Wright and got him off balance, making it the perfect time to establish some power to make him uncomfortable, Wright still was able to anchor down and chill, even with Anderson getting free shot after free shot at his ribs. In the run game, that lack of size shows up too. You'll see him touted as a guy who could play up and down the line at Alabama, but just because he played there in college does not make it a strength. My guy got blown off the ball on double teams, tight ends on the edge were giving him a pretty hard time too. So from a power perspective, both as a pass rusher and as a run defender, I just don't see it.
That's not to say he didn't show some impressive ability when navigating the offensive line with speed. He can process things quickly and diagnose runs well. Here, Tennessee wants this to look like a zone run play to his side. Both right and the guard, plus the tight end, come off the ball like they're blocking to their left, or Anderson would have to scream downhill to make the play, but they're actually running counter where he is a pulling guard coming right at him. Anderson spills counter by going inside using a wrong arm technique, and the way he swiftly flows into the running back shows just how good his instincts are knowing where the ball is going to be. When comparing these guys to try and figure out who is better, it comes down to Tyree Wilson being the ceiling play where he has all the tools and traits, but you worry that he's really, really far from that ceiling and you wonder what it'll take for him to get there. And then for Will Anderson, you wonder if he has that ceiling at all and worry that you're paying more for his college career accolades than actually who you're getting as a pass rusher at the next level. Based on the grades I gave them, I wouldn't draft either of them in the top five, but I'd be intrigued to pick Tyree Wilson in the 5-10 to 10 range and see what I can mold him into. Anderson is smart enough and has good enough technique that I think he'll have a solid career, but I just don't see the top five pick ceiling to build around him for my pass rush. At the end of the day, that is what this is all about, the QB or hitting the QB, and to be honest, I worry about both. Football, when boiled down to it, is simple. Win with a good quarterback and demolish their quarterback. And at the end of the day, two teams will gamble big to make both of these guys their guys. Oh,